All right, hello there, everybody. Uh, of course, my name is Kbot. Uh, I don't even know what's going to happen in Twitch yet today. Uh, so y'all have fun down there and be civil. We're probably going to not pay attention to you. Uh, my name is Kbot. I am joined tonight by Rissa and Chara. Uh, both of them are tuning in for the evening. Chara DM me was like, hey, can I watch party this? I was like, why don't you just join us on the cast? <laughs> and so... Now I'm here. <laughs> and now you're here. So, uh, should be a good one. Uh, of course, Sonda versus 100% Sunshine. Um, this is a Division 1 semi-final match. The winner of this is going to go on to play Arctic Moon. Both these teams are undefeated. I think a lot of people, like all of us, are looking forward to this match. Rissa, I know you and I were talking about it a little bit ago. Uh, should be a very exciting one. Yeah, I'm super excited for this, especially because when I think of 100% Sunshine and Sonder, these are both teams that I think of, like, you know, in the weeklies, like in SOS, like they always do super well, and they're just always the team to watch in weekly tournaments like that. So seeing them both get this far is really cool, and I'm really excited for it. Yeah, uh, should be a lot of fun. And Chara, I know you said that you've scrimmed both of these teams recently. So uh, how about you share any insights that you might have for the crew? Personally, I think Sonder is kind of, they're doing pretty well lately. They're starting to figure out a little bit of stuff in their comps. There is still some stuff that they kind of trip up on a little bit and make some mistakes. But they've overall to me at least, than cleaning up their gameplay and making less mistakes overall. But I think they definitely have a really good chance to get the win here. 100% Sunshine is just kind of... I feel like they're kind of a wild card sometimes. It's hard, Theoretically, like, I think individual-wise, they arguably have, like, the highest individual skill out of anyone in Div 1. But it's just if their coordination and team play can match the level of other teams, because I do think Arctic, Moon, and Sonder both have better team play than they do so mm -hmm. to me it's just interesting to see which 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 team is going to be capitalizing on the other's mistakes the best here i think it's going to determine what wins um, and that's and that's one of the things you know that uh we kind of talk about a little bit i mean of course 100 sunshine i feel like is more of a pickup uh i yeah yeah, yeah, yeah char hold on um of course, me trying to multitask is not going to happen. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, so, you know, talking about a little bit of a pickup, you know, I, I feel like that's 100% Sunshine more so, right? A little bit more of a pickup. Of course, they've been playing together in Ludi for a little while, but perhaps these players don't play with each other all of the time, right? Especially, um, we have Kiwi and Riki just made a new team, Sub-Zero, right? Um, so it'll be interesting to see where that roster goes as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, and Rissa, you know, as you mentioned, you see a lot of these players consistently place well in tournaments like Swim or Sink, tournaments like Testing Grounds even, uh, come out on top and win a lot of those tournaments now, uh, from forming various pickup squads to do so. So should be a great old time. And we're going to go ahead and dive into things here. I do not have the map list pulled up. Um, so hopefully I one of you two that. does. Um, I, I mean, do not either. <laughs> I can, I can it, find it. I mean, I can find it and I can get it if I really need to. Uh, but also, I don't have it's to. So, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, we're going to be starting on Tower Control Mako. Um, should be a little bit of an interesting one to start off on. Char, if you had to guess, who is this uh, map going to favor? I do think this map is slightly going to favor Sonder. I think there's a really good K52 map. It's a good machine map. Shy is very flexible enough to pick a backliner that works here. I think it's just a good map for their playstyle. It's also a very snowball heavy map. Once you get the tower past that second checkpoint, it's really easy to just take the rest of the game. And Sonder does have the more, I guess, kind of more in your face orientated comps. So I think they definitely have a good advantage on the stage. Have to see. Looks like we're going to go ahead and hop right on into things. Of course, semifinals on the line. Both these teams undefeated in Ludi, but one of them is going to go home today. Uh, late night tonight for those of you in North America and for any of you in Europe that are listening right now, go to bed. What are you doing here? Let's knock that off. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and hop into things, of course. Uh, probably compositions we'd expect here, of course. Synapse on the Kensa 52, Russa. Yeah, Synapse on the Kensa 52, and uh, Shy, 
both of the uh, anchor backlines uh, playing bamboo here. So Kiwi, of course, on the bamboo, and Shy, who's also known to play charge or uh, or uh, like C jet things like that, is also going to be playing bamboo as well. So I think that's good to match that energy. Yeah, absolutely here. And looks like here we're actually going to see 100% sunshine start to get the ball rolling here just a little bit more. Is they're going to go ahead and clear this first checkpoint? Of course, that first checkpoint um, probably going to be. Generally inconsequential, and of course, there's a, there's DC. a DC. Okay. Uh, Woo! Well, I'm coming, all right. <laughs> hey. All right, guys. Good trial run. We stuck right on script. Good uh, news. Next time. Good news. The DC Nothing. was not me. <laughs> um. <laughs> I did make yeah, sure I was on the right Wi-Fi. Let me turn on my screen for this in case. So if you do, Rista can still see. Yeah, but if I do, th that's kind of. I mean, you two can radio cast, I guess, or all three of us can. I got the I got the radio view. <laughs> um. Uh, well, they are speedrunning the power knockout, which is what you like to see in this situation. Yeah, at least yeah. it's not zones, you know. Uh, yeah, I also forgot to mention. There's another reason for this to be on the map is that uh, Shadow Wind plays almost entirely Tenebrella, and this is probably one of the worst map modes to play Ten in the entire game. So, not having to deal with the Ten is always nice. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Uh, not having to deal with that. I'm going to... That's a good point. We're going to do predictions. Um, I'm going to make it for... Two minutes. Uh, and go. Alright, cool. Thank you, that guy Jim, in chat for reminding me. Who was that that dc That was, uh, Taco. Uh, Taco. Unlucky. Discord DC overlay. I didn't do that. I didn't do that either, but... See, the the way I see it is that everyone here is going to recognize, like... Hopefully, yeah. if you're tuning in on my channel, you recognize my name, my voice. And then I would hope that, like, Rissa, you've cast it up for people to know your voice. And Char, yeah. I assume people know your voice, too, because of all the content. Um, <laughs> so I just kind of left it as is, you know. Um, I just put it because I, I do pickups with a bunch of different people all the time, and so it just helps you two people keep track of, like, when they're watching who exactly is playing. Because so I always get that, like, as a question, like, who are you playing with? So just there, you're on the top of the screen. And I, I, also, a question. <laughs> I also didn't turn on color lock, which <gasps> oh, yeah. wouldn't be a problem. Actually, I'm going to do that real quick. Wouldn't be a problem except for the part where my scoreboard is color locked. I did that when I was, uh, I streamed my last little set. I was like, oopsie. <laughs> okay. Hopefully, we'll be getting back to this in a moment. Um, and hopefully, we can sit back and enjoy the match. I thought Omega was commentating. I assume Taco's oh, resetting the router or something to that nature. Yeah, probably. Go. Oh, there we go. Okay, so Tower Control Mega Mart. Where were we? Um. <laughs> Rest is Omega. Omega sounds like Char. I mean, I know that. Like, never I, heard that before, honestly, never in my entire life. Yeah. I've never heard that. Never. <laughs> right. Alright, we're gonna hop into this one now. Hopefully for real this time. Cross your fingers, everybody. Um, and now Color Lock is on for all of your enjoyment needs. So we're gonna go ahead and hop into this one. Someone's gotta let me know if the audio balance sounds about right this time around. Same compositions. And uh, finally, it's time to dive in. Yeah, yes. we see... Oh, go ahead. You go ahead. Okay, Shadowwind gets the armor charged off early, but the pick does come out on the side of 100% Sunshine first. As the counter armor comes out, we're seeing Saunders slowly push into mid, get back to er, 100% Sunshine, slowly get that map control mid and get control of the tower for their first push. Yeah, they are getting their first push in Shadowwind there on the tower, trying to just uh, juggle the tower here. Um, I like that uh... Shadow is getting points here, just balancing the tower to get past his first checkpoint, and saves the armor past his first checkpoint too, that way their teammates can just continue to push up. Looks very familiar. Yes, they're, not as... getting a, 
There's 100% Sunshine starting to build up a little bit of momentum. Of course, they were able to get to past that first checkpoint. Uh, but a 2 down situation is going to mean that Sonder is going to have an opportunity here to start building up their momentum. So you see Synapse is going to get one on the front lines here. And they're starting to try to build up a little bit more of this map coverage, but so far not being super over aggressive, right? They want to make sure that they're holding all their ground. They're certainly sticking close to this first checkpoint, making sure not to overextend it. Here come all the specials in order to continue their push on through past this first checkpoint, Charlie. Yeah, we all there's another VC. No. It's Taco again. Um. Oh, no. Well. No. Not like this. That should not. Does that count? I honestly have no idea. It doesn't look like they're stopping to play. Um, yeah, so we, I guess it's counting. Yeah, we might as well continue this one. But of course, Sonder with the lead right now it doesn't look like uh, they're probably gonna let go of that. It's it, it takes a lot to win a 3d4 situation uh and so unlikely to see that happen but of course we'll have to see exactly how this one continues to play out maybe you know, hopefully 100 sunshine can try to bring in another sub or someone else that's available right now uh because that would be unfortunate if they just lose this but does look like saunders gonna go three down henlo is gonna get taken down in the process after that splash down on top of the tower and perhaps it's gonna be something where 100 sunshine if they play their cards right they should be able to just kind of mitigate the pressure but again getting down that 24 point marking past that second checkpoint when you're always a member down it's going to be just so difficult to do char yeah we do see ricky setting up here he is maintaining pretty well they're trying to get something off but it's just difficult to get a pick the members of Saunders playing this smart and just trying to stay alive the bubble war not managing to spread that bria in time as ricky goes down rissa yeah i really like the spacing that ricky was utilizing there on that uh left stack um but Synapse here leading the charge is gonna just help uh, Sonder be able to push back into mid and uh, there's two down technically on the side of 100% Sunshine now as Sonder is gonna push into mid and start trying to push the tower again. We'll see how far they can try to push this one, see if they can try to go for the knockout here. Of course, two minutes left to go. It'd be kind of unfortunate to just watch it 3v4 for two minutes of time, but we'll see exactly how this one plays out. Of course, another two down situation here. 400% sunshine is these shadow wind back all the way up, conserving that armor for the right time to strike on this defensive side. But Saunders just continuing to roll this tower on through here. They're already approaching this final checkpoint. As Shai's continue to ride the tower, shadow wind gonna try to dive on, takes care of shy but the rest of the three members of Sonder have swarmed in come in from behind and are going to be able to take the knockout and that's going to be 1-0 for Sonder. man unfortunate starting that out with a dc uh for 100 sunshine but uh i'm actually gonna i just you know just in case this keeps happening through the set i'm gonna pull up the dc rules just for a reference too I don't know if it's 40 or 50, I mean 30 or 50, but uh, that play counts because they played it, so... Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, uh, they're, we're not replaying that one. I can almost guarantee you that that one is not getting replayed. Um, but we will, of course, I mean, I, I really do hope that they're going to be able to find a sub. Uh, of course, mm -hmm. you all are going to know if they have a sub as soon as we do. I'm in no additional contact with the players really i just you know slid into synapses dms and got the password and you know i'm not gonna bother them for the rest of the set so we'll see what happens here uh maybe a host change i well, don't know that we will have to see but wait who just left definitely very unfortunate um i think it's the same person uh no, kiwi it's someone else i do oh uh, okay. yeah they're changing out Oh, Do they have a Ross? They have a oh, they have Billy, right? Oh no, Billy's on. No, they don't have Billy. They do well, have. Billy can transfer. They have Billy Oscar. can transfer. Oh, okay, they do have someone. Okay. They Billy, do I have Oscar. Oscar. Yeah. Oscar I just know. Uh, I just know Billy played in the Ludi playoff tournament, not playoff tournament, the qualifying tournament. I do know he played that with them. And I guess it's the same pass. It is not the same pass. Well, that sucks. <laughs> I gotta check this code more. Steffi can play AO? <gasps> <laughs> no, that's not gonna happen. Not gonna happen this time. 
Um, Stuffy also... not on the team? Oh, you are in no title. Nope. Rip. What is, um... I want to take a look Everyone. at the predictions. Uh, 100% sh sunshine with 57% of the points. Submit it. Yeah, I'd Very close. Well, okay. So. I, I gave them the prediction W. I think they'll take it like 5-3, something like that. But, I mean, now they have a DC and might have a sub, so that might that prediction may have been horribly outdated and I may lose a thousand channel points for it. So uh, we'll see. <laughs> rhythm, let Kbot play. That would be, uh, miserable to watch, okay? You don't want to see that, okay? I can guarantee you that that is, that would just be miserable for all parties involved, okay? And, and we don't want to air that on Twitch tonight, all right? We're supposed to have chill vibes. It's late night looty, okay? Not, uh, nobody knows what's going on, Lady. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at the disconnect rules, so it says each team is allowed a single disconnection replay during a set, as long as uh, it abides by the rules, and it's like usual disconnect rules. Well. Yeah, so they don't get a replay then, because they already had one DC replay, so they can't. In fact, they can't, if the, even if he DCs again in the future, they cannot replay at all, so. Mm hmm Ooh. Yeah, that's uh. That's rough. Hopefully but, they're calling I mean, up Oscar right now. Uh, that's yeah. all I've got to say. Definitely want to have the sub at the ready in this case. Get someone on standby. Yeah. Uh, and everyone knows that the European tournament organizers and Ludi are probably all asleep right now. So, uh, good luck getting an emergency sub approved. Um, <laughs> but right, I'll sub in for the I'll sub in for the Ludi stuff. Perfect. All right. There we go. <laughs> Problem solved as we head on right. to our next map. It's going to be humpback zones here. Very similar compositions. We do see Riki going on over to the Neo Splash instead of that Squeezer Chara here opting for that Bomb Rush. Yeah, and surprisingly, I'm seeing a Kensa Luna from Shy, which is not something I've expected. I've seen him do Blob for the Pain Spam, but I've not seen the Fizzy... Hungry K Luna weapon, but so far it seems to be working out with them as they get a solid opening shot. Just pressuring with bombs. You see a lot of them building their armors. They do already have that Buya and Inkstorm at the ready, but 100% Sunshine taking their time to push back in, Rissa. Yeah, 100% sun Sunshine now. We can see they're starting to use their specials. They've popped their uh, armor, they've popped their missiles to try and be able to push into the zone. And as they do that, they do take one down. Um, but Sonder just did a really good job at having defensive specials to hold the zone on there. But now another two down for Sonder is going to allow the Sunshine to move forward a little bit more. And they're going to be able to take care of the zone here as well. And it looks like another two down situation for Sonder here as well. So again, just going to be more position control coming out of this Sunshine squad. As they're going to start uh, to try to keep Sonder back here a little bit. Looks like they're going to try to pop a couple of specials of their own. You see the Ink Armor and here comes the Booyah Bomb from Sonder. Going to be enough to cap the zone here. We'll have to see if they can completely push through. But it doesn't seem like they've done it. And right now there are no specials on the board, Char. Yeah, definitely see Oscar trying to find some way around here, but Sonder maintaining control of that zone has the storm is starting to push up, and we see 100% Sunshine is just slowly losing space. They have the specials, but if they can't get them off fast enough, it looks like one player will already be going down. It may be too little too late as Sonder needs to push the advantage here. However, Ricky finding a kill, and I believe finding a second kill, will lead to 100% Sunshine being able to recap the zone, Rissa. Yeah, that was a really great hold um, and really great engagements happening there for 100% Sunshine. Now they are holding the zone. Um, we can see Caden here trying to paint for armor. Caden has that armor at the ready and waiting for more specials from Sonder to be able to push in and get ready for their push as they do just that. Here we go. They're starting to move on forward. They're going to be able to find the cap, but there's still no one down right now for Sunshine. Caden's trying to find one on this far side. The Tenet Missiles come back to counter, though, and it looks like Sunshine's going to try to recap this zone. It's another 2 down situation for Sonder, and they're going to be able to do just that, minimizing their penalty right now for 100% Sunshine, and they're going to start getting in these positions where they, go, where they want to try to make sure that they hold onto this zone for this next engagement. Yeah, we do see that Shadowwind already has that armor at the ready. going to be a key tool in holding... But we're not seeing the members of 100% Sunshine really be able to get much ground outside of zone, which means that double fizzy spam, the rain, all the specials are going to have a really simple time being able to push back in a zone. We do see the lead get flipped. Shadowwind desperately trying to maintain control of the zone, but Henlo 
will be having none of that, getting a kill before he goes down. And it is another fight in mid that it looks like Sonder is slowly but surely looking to win. Unless if Ricky can get this fight win, but goes down to Synapse. And Sonder with some staggering kills, gonna be able to maintain control of the zone. Yeah, Sonder doing a really good job there at being able to push up, um, work together to get take on those 2v1s to be able to push in and get the zone and get the kills that they needed. So now, as they've done that, and they did that so carefully, they are able to get the lead in on their side. So now it's up to 100% 100 Sunshine here to push back in and at least cap the zone. They have their armor, they're using their bomb rushes um, to try and push up, and at, they do cap the zone, KBOT. Able to find the cap here. Ricky trying to find a little bit more, but they're not going to be able to do just that. Sonder right now has control of the zone, but now it's only Synapse alive for them right now. It's a 2v1 on top of the zone. It's Kiwi and company are going to be able to cap this one for the time being. But again, the question is, can they hold on for long enough? We're going to have to see if, if they can come out with that. You already see the Fizz Bombs trying to put some of the pressure on 100% Sunshine to make sure that they don't feel quite comfortable. But this next fight very well might decide the game. Sonder just waiting to pull the trigger but they have a DC of their own. Wait a minute, it's a double DC on either side. It's a 3v3 right now for the remainder of this match. And we'll have to see if who comes out on top here. Yeah, it's similar weapons going down on both sides. And 3v3 definitely makes it a bit more set on the kills as the players going to need to get more picks to be able to push in. They're just going to have a bit more of an opportunity to get in, less people to check the flanks. And Shadow and looking to pull that off. However, Synapse with a crucial kill. You're gonna be setting up the man advantage, but Kiwi brings one right back, making it even as Synapse tries to get that Booya Bomb for safekeeping. Getting shot at, manages to get the Booya Bomb off just in time. Kiwi getting backed up, and Sonder trying to maintain control of the zone, but as players slowly go down, it looks like 100% Sunshine is gonna have one last chance to try to hold it, as Synapse manages to save his life for the last fight. Yeah, we are going into overtime right now here, with 100% Sunshine in control of the zone. Um, 3v3 situation happening here as 100% Sunshine takes down a Shy, a Shy tries to push in, Rick taking down another, and it's just hello up GG. left for Sonder, that's a complete wipe, and that is going to be game 100% Sunshine taking game two. Ricky coming in clutch on the front line there, 400% sunshine. It wasn't necessarily the most flashy of plays, but did exactly what needed to be done. Sneaking around behind the enemy lines, behind their defenses, and able to take care of business. So 100% sunshine is going to equalize the set at a game of peace. And um, hopefully we don't see any more DCs. Like, I want to see more 4v4 gameplay instead of 3v3 gameplay. But uh, that was, that was interesting. Uh, from both teams. Yeah, Kiwi, oh. definitely the MVP of that map, not only managing to get 10 missiles of the bamboo, which has to be the most I've ever seen, but also pushing into spawn to be able to get enough space to be able to set up that pincer. They eliminated all that map control, which set up perfectly for Ricky to get in. And it's that kind of aggressive play that needed to happen the whole match. And I'm apparently someone... Uh, oh my... I don't know what's going on, dude. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. We've now seen two disconnects. But, I mean, at least the score is even with all the disconnect stuff. So, I mean, at least no team's getting a score lead off of it. I don't know I... what's going on, but... Um... I think that's the first time I've ever commentated in a person DC'd from both sides. <laughs> Char, can you actually that, host? I wasn't talking, but... Uh, oh, I'm hosting? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I did... I did happen to catch it, though, when the DCs happened, and I'm almost certain that they both happened at the exact same time. <laughs> Which means it is 100% a host thing at that oh. point. Oh no. So... It's one of those days on Splatoon. Char, I'm, I just... I'm scared. I, I mean, I have the room up, but I'm scared if it's gonna work. Uh, my pass is uh, in chat. I don't, I don't feel safe. Everyone's disconnected in every game that's happened. <laughs> yeah, um... Uh... You said uh, let me get the maps as well. That's in that. general. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm delete that. The map. Oh, oops, wrong chat, sorry. I mean, there is no right chat because there isn't like a private chat, it would just be DMs. Well, this set is effectively a best of seven now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it works out. Just best of seven set, ignore the first things and hope it doesn't happen again. Talk about late night looty. Uh, you know it's dire when they ask the guy from Cali <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, to be fair, I, I hope everyone in this lobby is North American. Um, 
seeing as how it is, it is 11 o'clock Eastern and like 5 o'clock European. Oh, wait, are we seeing a sub? Uh... I think, is Leafy on their roster? Leafy is definitely not on their roster. No, wait, I don't think Leafy's played for a team in Ludi. Let me go look at help desk. Yeah, I, I don't think Leafy was on a team. I probably... Yeah. He's saying she is on the roster. We'll have to verify it, I guess. But it looks like Leafy is probably going to be subbing, which means this is now effectively sub-zero plus one. So, uh, that definitely... They didn't, didn't update... update the... okay, everyone's Check saying the she's transfer on the chat. Roster. Everyone's saying she's on the roster. I have, like, okay. five people in chat saying it. I'm gonna assume it's fine. Yeah, I mean, if he's not, then they'll just get DQ'd later. Yeah, it's not my problem. So. I'm gonna assume. <laughs> Dang. All right. Well, uh. Teams correctly, which will happen eventually. There we Chara... go. I'm just gonna Bravo. In. I'm gonna Bravo in case someone DC so the teams get set correctly because yeah, it's not safe. Shara right. has officially given up. Uh, for all of you. We'll see what happens. Okay, so. Best of seven now. Uh, 30 minutes after the start time of the match. Uh, hopefully, no one DCs. Knock on wood. Um, hopefully, your popcorn's ready. Uh, and, yeah. We'll see what happens here. Rainmaker Surgeon Shipyard is the one that is up next. Can we even make any, like, judgments based on who's going to, like be more successful on this map based on what we've seen so far. I don't know if we can. Definitely like, not up previous stuff, but yeah. yeah. Plus this this map in mode two is can uh, anything can happen. So but based on what we've seen from the two teams, you know, we can't really say much. And also this map in mode just all sorts of things can happen. So we're gonna just gonna have to see how this plays out. Also, in addition, of course, Leafy joining is going to be playing that Nautilus. You can almost certainly expect that. And that'll be another aggressive threat that uh, we're going to have to deal with. That Bamboo plus Nautilus combination coming out now from 100% Sunshine. We'll have to see uh, what Sonder tries to do in order to defend that. Of course, right now you see Shy on the Bamboo. Probably going to try to do that. And then, of course, Henlo uh, on this Kenson machine. Throwing these busy bombs, trying to get these arc shots as well. Just being as annoying as possible. But it's just not going to cut it when you're facing a Nautilus. Yeah, we do see Leafy managing to hold the center of the map. And 100% Sunshine slowly getting map control. Having a very threatening comp with the Nautilus and Bamboo. Just able to absolutely shred things. And Leafy pushing up far. Getting that inkjet to maintain the space. The Rainmaker just needs to follow suit. But at this point... They just need to go. They have three points as long as they can move forward before the mist gets set up too far. And we are seeing them take this push a bit slowly, but getting map control slowly but surely. Kaden managing to get a trade in Shadow Wind, running right past people to get the lead to 22. Yeah, really good lead there in the, in, within the first minute of this match. So that's a really, really great start from 100% Sunshine. Oh, I feel like oh, oh, oh. unfortunately saw that from Shy's point of view. Shy missing and takes a little dive there as uh, from as we saw that. Uh, yeah. Shy, you can't be doing that, all right? You can't get away with that stuff all of the time. But we'll have to see what the re-engagement is coming in from Sonder here. But Caden's going to go down. Means they're not going to have the armor for this one. And that's probably going to mean that 100% Sunshine is going to be able to hold on to mid right now. And the Rainmaker, two down already for Sonder. Synapse is forced to back on away. And all of a sudden, 100% Sunshine is back on the offensive. Yeah, we do see that Sonder is just kind of forcing a corner, really struggling to get picks right now. But Synapse manages to shark in to finally get the Rainmaker. A bit of commentated curse there. Pushing up here. The Splash gets knocked back. But Synapse trying to maintain control in court. Somehow gets the kill onto Ricky before going down to Leafy. But 100% Sunshine slowly losing members. But they're somehow keeping this fight in control. As Sonder slowly gains map control in mid. Leafy tries to prevent it from happening. Does get the kill on the Bamboo. And manages to hold mid with that Inkjet. And 100% Sunshine is not going anywhere. Yeah, 100% Sunshine, Leafy just absolutely doing a really great job at holding mid there, waiting for their teammates. Um, though Leafy now going to get caught, called out here by Henlo, and Henlo's going to notice that situation, uh, that they do have advantage, and I love that Sonder here is immediately pushing the Rainmaker. They know that they have the upper hand right now in this situation, so they're going to try and get points on the board. 
We'll have to see for just how long Sonner is going to have this upper hand. Henlo now popping the splash on, but going to get taken down. And again, Leafy coming in with the splat. Eight splats and assists right now for Leafy. Three minutes into the game. A little bit of commentator's curse as Leafy does go down herself. But now uh, it looks like Sonner might be trying to sustain this a little bit. They're going to continue to build up mid pressure. They're going to try to build up a couple more of their specials. And now they're going right back on top of this little area here, trying to maintain their control over the Rainmaker. Someone's going to have to go back there make sure before it resets, but no, they're going to just let it reset back into mid. They have two specials at the ready, and they're going to be looking to try to keep up this push. Now Synapse popping this inkjet, trying to find the one here before that uh, comes a little bit more of an issue, but Riki is going to go down in the process, and Sonder is just going to continue rolling forward with his push, Char. Yeah, well, they're getting a lot of momentum and without the threat of any Stingray. They can play a lot more patiently than you normally see teams be able to do on Rainmaker. However, this left side area is so small that specials have a huge impact on being able to fall out the Rainmaker. And if they're unable to push from a different side or get ahead of them, the missiles or inkjet are just always going to stop the push. And Saunders slowly but surely getting pushed out of mid. Leafy once again being the front line getting that map control. And time is running out. Saunders going to need to come up with something fast. And it looks like Sub-Zero is actually going to be stalling the Rainmaker, electing to leave it just in the color without even popping it, which might actually be a very smart play as 100% Sunshine has an amazing comp at just walling out Sonder. So far doing a great job, Rissa. Yeah, that's a really smart play, like you, uh, Char said, um, just letting the Rainmaker stall there. Um, Sonder has to get up in this top left area if they even want a chance to pop the Rainmaker and grab the Rainmaker. So uh, we're seeing 100% Sunshine jumping back, making sure that they just control this area. Sonder, though, able to finally get up in this top left area and grab the Rainmaker within the last 20 seconds of the match or two but the question is, what are they going to do? Caden's left all alone right now, and it's good, just going to take an inkjet here in order to take care of Caden. And who is it? None other than Leafy, of course. Inkjet's going to go down here, but with 10 seconds left to go, and Zonder in a two-down situation, make it a three-down situation. 100% Sunshine is just going to be the ones to take this game. Leafy coming in clutch with the 13 splats and assists. And, of course, uh, the end zap here as well for 100% Sunshine with that 13 as well. But nonetheless... Uh, the sub looking very strong for 100% Sunshine as they take the lead in the set. It definitely saw a lack of adaption from Sonder on how to push that, especially taking that Rainmaker on the top side against a comp like that is just going to be a big problem. There's not a lot of room to move around from the side, so when you get walled up on the bamboo, the inkjet, the missiles, there's just nowhere they could really go to be able to take advantage of their comp's angles that they have with the machine. But it, we're definitely going to have to see some adaptions from Sonder because they're going to really struggle at being able to deal with this type of composition that they're going against. You can't just fight it head on. The only thing really capable of that is a machine with its angles, so there's going to have to be some change of game plan. Maybe they practice for the comps 100% sunshine they thought they would have, but now you're playing against Sub-Zero, so you better change your strategy before it's too late. And hopefully, this map can be a chance for them to start something as Snapper Clams is quite a bit of a wild card, honestly. But one of the problems, I feel like, Rissa, is, you know, talking about adaptation here, I feel like Sonder is kind of a known entity, right? It's not like they can pull something out of their back pocket here. Sure, we've seen Synapse go over to, like, the Neo Splash, or actually, I guess it was the Vanilla Splash in that case, not even the Neo Splash, uh, as opposed to playing the K-52. And, of course, Shy showed the Kensa Luna earlier, but what can you do if you're Sonder right now? I mean, a lot of your members are just pretty comfortable on whatever their main weapons are. That's a really good question, you know. If you're going into this expecting to be fighting... 100% uh, Sunshine with a K-Shot versus now it's 100% Sunshine with a Nautilus and it's Leafy um, of all people who's just so dominant in their playstyle with the Nautilus so the Sonder like you said they are they have the weapons that they play you know they can flex a little bit but they're gonna have to try and figure out you know how do we deal with uh, the pressure of Kiwi's bamboo but also the Nautilus and here comes Riki on the squeezer as well. Is going to come in and clutch here. Try to build up a little bit more space as well in this composition. We'll have to see exactly uh, now if Sonder can try to find an answer for that as well, Chara. Yeah, I think the comp change is still pretty similar. Still has a short range shooter since obviously squeezer not in bend would be a lot of mid range. But the squeezer still plays that very similar role of being able to wall players out and threaten kills. But this time having that bubble blower special, which is exceptionally good on clam blitz. Probably best special in this mode in general. And Sonder, on the other hand, though, is off to a really good start, but quite a bit stuck, and those kind of missiles are going to do a great job at clearing clumped up opponents. 
as they try to maintain mid control right now. The Booyah Bomb comes out, but Shy already going down is not going to be a good start for them as they're trying to maintain mid control. Kaden gets that armor, but they are still stuck on the sides, electing to play this one patiently, trying to look for a kill. They manage to find one onto the splash. Kaden in prime position to get two players, manages to get the assist onto one and score. It's going to be opening the push for them. Yeah, I love the way that Kaden held his armor there. Um, they held their armor, waited for everyone to regroup, they got a pick, and they immediately armored and pushed with that. Now the points are down to 53 for Sonder, and they are continuing to jump in with Clams here as they are scoring Clams, and there's two down on 100% Sunshine. The Clams just keep coming in from Sonder, and they just might be able to KO this if they can get one more Clam. Looks like they're going to be able to find that. Ricky going down right there, and there is Kaden to follow that one up. And Sonder... With a 100-0 knockout after struggling in Game 3, they come back and with a strong answer in Game 4. Yeah, I don't think there's any better adaption you can see than them turning around, not losing any points, and then promptly 100-0 to zero push in one try. So, definitely figured out what they needed to do. But I'm going to be honest, y'all. How much did 100% Sunshine kind of just let them do that? I mean, to me, it didn't look like 100% Sunshine was really trying to collapse around the barrier. It looked like they were all just trying to dive in, trying to come in with these large plays. But at the end of the day, you're going to need to find a way to charge, try to get some semblance of specials, try to get at least some semblance of a person or a squid advantage and try to move on forward. I mean, I wasn't seeing a lot of defense there coming out of 100% Sunshine, and that's worrying, especially if we're looking at a future Clan Blitz game down the line, Rissa. That is, um, that's a good point, you know, that's one of those moments where you have to, you know, really assess your situation. Okay, Saunders is continuing to score, the basket is still open, you know, we, maybe we need to stop, back up, just get some specials, that way we can safely push in and at least stop the push, at least stop them from getting clamps so we can uh, try and get our own push in. We'll have to see exactly uh, what the response is here. Of course, we're going to Inkblot Splat Zones, which is a map mode combination where both these teams ought to be feeling very comfortable, as it is a very consistent one. But of course, with this longer range composition that is coming out of 100% Sunshine, uh, you know, we'll have to see if Sonder can try to find an answer for these things, especially without something like a bomb rush. Yeah, and we do see 100% Sunshine back on the Nautilus play, managing to find a trade on a Synapse. Shadow Wind getting that armor off immediately, trying to find the pick on the machine. There's a battle on the left side of the map, but unfortunately, 100% Sunshine does not have the opportunity to play that very slowly. Gonna have to back off to mid. Shadow Wind smartly making sure they just maintain zone here, managing to hold on as Shy and Kaden force the retreat. Will be the game one fight, will be the first fight of the match slowly going to 100% Sunshine as they set up to hold this map. Yeah, we saw Leafy there holding top mid with the Nautilus, and Caden uh, and Shy recognized that they weren't, that wasn't a situation that they could safely approach, right? So they are backed up. Sonder now has all of their specials ready, so they need to uh, uh, start getting their specials off, and they do just that. Shy got a missile, armor coming out uh, for Caden as well, and the Booyah Bomb coming out from Synapse here. They haven't quite, though, been able to cap the zone yet, Kbot. Gotta see if they can try to find out a little bit of map control, but no, Leafy's gonna be able to take care of Shy right there, and it's a two-down situation already for Sonder. The last two members are gonna try to hold on for dear life, and Synapse is gonna, uh, again here, try to shark, but can't really seem to do anything, and now all of a sudden, we're getting dangerously close to knockout territory. 100% Sunshine, down past 30 left to go. And they're looking pretty strong here to hold on to this one. We've got a couple specials starting to charge up here for Sonder. Of course, Synapse with this Booyah Bomb going to try to throw it on here and try to neutralize the zone for the temporarily. But the armor is going to go down at that Booyah Bomb. Now it's going to be able to neutralize here momentarily. And finally, Sonder finds the cap, applying that critical penalty that's going to extend the game. And they did manage to get the cap, but barely as it just seemed Sub-Zero or 100% Sunshine here was just not able to paint the zone just a tiny bit more would have been able to secure them the game. So definitely... A clutch cap, but something they cannot have that be that poorly executed. But still, Thonder getting staggered, not able to keep four people alive. And the specials continuing to come out from 100% Sunshine as the timer slowly picks down. And Saunders just cannot seem to keep four players alive right now. If they can't manage to regroup in time, they're not going to have any time left for a push. There's only 20 points left. The Inkjet comes out to make sure the staggering continues. The Zap and Bandu go down. And it is a, going to be a desperate play as Hemlo already going down. Synapse stuck in the corner. Tries to be to contest the zone. 
but it is a lost cause as there is no way they can manage to get to the zone in time. And that'll be 100% Sunshine taking a confident game five. Are we really just going to go back and forth like this? Are we, are we really <laughs> just going to keep doing this? I, I would like to see like some back and forth within the context of a single game. Which the closest we got was the humpback three v three. Like if it takes going back the to 3v3. a three v three, I guess I'd rather watch a three, uh, like a close three v three, than wipes either direction. Um, but again, like I feel like these teams just haven't quite found their groove completely. I mean, Sonder was having a little bit of a difficult time trying to get off of their plat. You saw the armor come out, but you didn't see anyone help move on forward. You didn't see all of the specials there coming together for them uh, in some of those cases. And, you know, in fairness, there was a lot of pressure being put on them by a lot of that longer range that we've been talking about at 100% Sunshine, right? With the Squeezer, with the Nautilus, with the Bamboo. Uh, you can only do so much when you're facing against that much range. Uh, but at the same time, just didn't quite seem like they could find themselves all together as a unit pushing forward and into the zone, Rissa. Yeah, I think that, I mean, we saw that too from like Kiwi's perspective. Kiwi was on the bottom left and was able to even just reach over to the uh, Saunders plat with that bamboo. And that type of pressure, you know, you have to play that so carefully. If uh, there's Kiwi with the bamboo just reaching over onto your plat, there's Leafy on top mid with the Nautilus and the Inkjets uh, adding pressure. So definitely, you know, I don't know if it's coming down to maybe maps and modes that uh, teams are more comfortable on, you know, or uh, matchups on certain maps, you know, we're going to have to see as we go into this next game. Uh, hopefully, like you were saying, Kbot, it's, you know, it's a little bit more even and not just one team or the other taking it. Let's hope, but I guess, you know, Chara, I don't, I don't know, like, how much experience you have in trying to observe teams and trying to figure out what the problem is. Does the problem look like it's more of a nerves problem, or does the problem look like it's more of a map and composition problem? Because I feel like you could probably make the argument either way, but I'm interested to hear your take. <laughs> Well, personally, it seems like it is mostly dealing with the Nautilus has been the big problem for them is once the Knot manages to get set up, they just have a really hard time being able to deal with it and try to force their way in a bit too much, getting them picked off on plat quite a lot. If they, they can just take their time, regroup, play a little bit safer on the defense and make sure they get their specials up, that's going to be what they need to do to be able to push that Nautilus out. So it's really just keep those nerves calm, focus on getting the specials put back in and don't worry about trying to rush things or you're just going to run straight into a Nautilus and it will definitely win that fight. But as far as this game opening up, we see Ricky getting an incredibly fast bomb rush, but Leafy getting picked off on the side of the map first as Ricky is forced to retreat here and Sonder looks like they're going to be taking mid for the first fight. Yeah, Sonder uh, doing a really good job at recognizing, hey, Leafy's down, let's take the tower, let's push up with, let's missile and just keep adding pressure here. So, um, as Sonder is riding the tower right now, Shy's gonna go down, unfortunately, to some missiles. Tenlo gonna hop on tower to at least hopefully get the tower past this first checkpoint. And um, there continues to be at least one down on the side of 100% Sunshine as uh, Sonder has been confidently pushing the tower. What yeah, the other things? Be an incredible bubble. Oh my god. All right. One one of the other things that I kind of like to watch here out of Sonda right now is that it looks to me like Caden's playing a little bit more passive right now overall, which is fine. I think there are, you know, certainly room for both passive and active supports, but Caden certainly sitting back is going to mean that Sonder doesn't have a lot of momentum in order to build up a lot of map control. And that's, I think, one of the reasons why they're trying to struggle and why you're seeing such a slow push with this on forward. It's not so bursty all of the time. Synapse here, though, trying to pop the Booyah Bomb, trying to sustain this push just a little bit more, and it's going to be another tier down situation for a 100% sunshine as Sonder is going to try to continue pushing this tower forward, but Leafy is going to be able to find the fall off from the Nautilus here, and it's going to try to come up with a little bit more, but it doesn't look like it's going to be able to do so for the time being. No, actually, he's going to be able to punish Shy here. Now going to drop back down, and Leafy's just playing this weapon so beautifully, and that's going to be a three-done situation for Sonder. Finally, the push ends down to the 17-point mark. Yeah, we do see Shadow Wind pushing the tower up. 100% sunshine. Taking a not so good start to this game, but still with plenty of potential to make that comeback. Specials coming up as 100% Sunshine has everything at the ready. Opting to play the special slowly, using half of them early to be able to have the second half for when they get to the checkpoint. Very smart and gaining a lot of momentum as a member of Saunders. Already being forced to jump out, but Shadowwind does go down, bringing the opportunity back to Saunders Kbot. 
Going down there, unfortunately, and that's going to mean that the Ink Armor isn't going to be there for a moment. You saw that try to get popped, but it didn't quite go off in time, didn't reach the teammates here. And now we're at the halfway point in the game, and we're Lasana Prison and Sunshine might be trying to work on something here, but Leafy going to get caught out here by Synapse in a little bit of an unfortunate Ink situation. And now all of a sudden, Sonder is going to be able to stall out this push for even longer. They're going to wait in order to build up a couple of their specials here, it looks like, making sure not to overextend, and I think that's the most important part here, Ressa. Yeah, I agree. You can see the Synapse just kind of holding back, you know, just juggling this uh, street area in case anyone approaches. Um, though, Synapse is going to go down here and that trade is going to happen though to, with Leafy. There's kind of just a lot of back and forth happening right now as the tower has just been stuck on this first checkpoint um, for 100% sunshine. So we can see both teams really trying to regroup and get specials work together to get a pick going. Uh, finally though, 100% Sunshine able to get past this first checkpoint, Kbot. Yeah, and it looks like right now that 100% Sunshine has been able to sustain the push through those trades and through that nature. But of course, now we're starting to see a little bit of push forward coming in from Sonder. Synapse going to pop this wheel bomb. It's going to be able to find one under Reki. And now we'll have to see. It looks like your 100% Sunshine might be backing off a little bit more as you see a little bit more yellow ink in the area. Leafy going to go down here to Synapse's 52. And it's a two-done situation for the Sunshine squad. It looks like they're going to be the ones to back on away from this one. And Sonder has finally stopped this push before it hits this second checkpoint. Yeah, we do see Sonder being able to maintain mid control, having a very smart defense, opting to play this much slower than they did on the ink block game. And it is paying off. They only have a minute left. Plenty of specials to hold it down, but we do see Henlo get picked off and the armor come out, which means that 100% Sunshine needs to push up on this. They need to take the opportunity from this armor to get under them. And slowly but surely, they are doing that, giving them the chance to push up here. We see the bombers coming out and Shadowland on that tower as we get to this left side. This is the key crucial point that they need to be able to get and it looks like armor jet is their opportunity to do so goes up booya bomb comes to respond but leafy able to find a kill onto hanlo and this is getting desperate now we have to turn our attention back onto the tower. Shadow Wind's going to go down here, but now it looks like it's going to reset. Ricky goes down here as well. Leafy and Kiwi are the last two up for 100% Sunshine, and it looks like they might not be able to do it, but there's only two members up for Sonder right now. They might be able to sustain this. Now Shadow Wind's going to join the fight. They are going to be able to clear past the second checkpoint. Now the entire 100% Sunshine squad is around here, but a suction bomb going to go off on tower. Leafy goes down here as well. Ricky as well, and there is Sonder to clean things up, and they once again equalize the set at three games apiece. That, oh, that was just really cool to watch. I mean, both teams, one team or the other wasn't like, you know, going in, uh, rushing in or anything like that. Um, both teams were trying to group up and get specials and play very well together um, and take their 2v1s together and just try and match up specials. So I think that both teams played that really well. Yeah, I definitely agree. We did see Sonder make the adaptions with a little bit of a close call at the end of it. Still managed to play much more together, much more safe without getting picked off early on. We did see some smart pushing from 100% Sunshine in sort of some saving their specials since they noticed Sonder was just giving them space and not really trying to contest them to keep their pushes going. A lot of smart plays happening for both teams, honestly. But as we get to Rainmaker Black Valley, we're going to need to see what's going to happen here but if i'm Sonder, i'm riding off this momentum they were not able to defeat the nautilus before they finally managed to get it and this is their time where they really need to be able to keep this momentum going getting a big win on rainmaker is going to be a huge point for the mental game and just solidifying them as the team to win this so i say this is a very important game to just get the win on and i'm quite curious to see what adaptions we're going to see because we could see Shy play any number of things. Obviously, we know Kiwi is most likely just going to stick with the bamboo, but curious to see if we're going to see a counter bamboo, a C jet, or maybe even something else. So, quite curious to see what Sonder has for Rainmaker. And if they can get this game win, it'll be absolutely huge for them. Now, I think one of the interesting things is we look towards a mode that is like Rainmaker. You know, we're starting to see a little bit more that it seems like Sonder might not necessarily have all the pieces of the puzzle quickly all of the time right they're struggling a little bit with trying to build up map control and i think a large part of that is because you know you see a player like synapse go over to the kensa 52 not going to paint as well as you know perhaps like in another end zap or another k shot maybe or or even you know if you have uh that 
vanilla splash even could paint a little bit better here but 100 sunshine seems to be building off their momentum as a team a little bit better we'll have to see if they can translate that one here into reigniting their lead on forward so we head on now to rainmaker looks like synapse gonna stick with against 52 here and it looks like uh as well we're gonna see uh ricky here on the neo splash Uh, so Ricky on the Neo Splash, I think uh, that's definitely really interesting compared to the Squeezer that we've been seeing uh, Ricky play. And Shy, actually, like Chara was uh, mentioning, I honestly was kind of expecting Shy to pull out the uh, Sea Jet, but Shy is actually matching Kiwi and playing the Bamboo. Yeah, very surprising to say the least, but it seems to be working out quite okay so far as they manage to maintain mid. Definitely just a overall battle, but the Bomber sneaking around behind them as well as Synapse going down is going to be a huge death from it. Caden barely getting out of there with his life. He is going to have to build up that armor quickly, but 100% Sunshine quickly turning this into a push. Leafy does go down and Synapse making a beeline for the Rainmaker gets a fast kill as Henlo trying to pressure into mid. But Kiwi will be having none of that Fizzy Bomb staying alive and using that Curly Bomb keep himself in the game and 100% Sunshine trying to maintain mid control be able to set up for another push K-Bot. Unfortunately, though, the Rainmaker did go down. Looks like Leaf is going to go ahead and hop on on that. But y'all, you're going to have to start pushing together as a team. You can't go a 1v3 into or trying to make a Rainmaker push as that one. It's just not going to work out. We'll have to see 100% Sunshine try to work together as a team a little bit more as they start to try to build up a little bit more momentum. But for right now, it's Saunders' opportunity to try to do the same. Ricky is caught between a rock and a hard place and he is going to fall. And we'll have to see exactly where Saunders decides to take this. They're playing the patient game overall right now letting themselves build up just a little bit more special but it looks like Henlo's gonna go down to the front lines the Rainmaker's gonna get taken out as well near mid and Leafy's gonna be flying high in the sky on top of that Rainmaker and 100% Sunshine's gonna have their opportunity now Reza. They are they recognize they got three down on Sonder they grab the Rainmaker immediately and are gonna start pushing it um though I didn't see who picked, uh, stopped the Rainmaker Carrier there, but Shadow Wind is going to go down as the Rainmaker Carrier for 100% Sunshine. And Sonder here trying to push immediately into mid, get map control, uh, pressure back anyone that they do see. Um, they were able to get Leafy as they did that. And Sonder letting the Rainmaker reset here as uh, both teams are just trying to juggle the pop here, Char. Yeah, we do see Ricky frantically fighting, not using Bombers for confidence to win without it. And Getting the sneak up onto Kate and getting in a good position behind them. Sonder with nowhere to move right now is going to be going two players down. Ricky narrowly avoiding the machine. And this is their best opportunity to push we've seen all game. If Synapse can get moved out of the way, they're going to be set. That Booyah Bomb keeping him alive almost. But Leafy not only managed to get the pick, but stay alive through it. He does go down the side. He's desperately trying to maintain this flat. And it is going to be the Rainmaker running forward to get points. As players go down with a lead of 45. But the push isn't even over as Kiwi <laughs> getting the kill on the Shy and on Synapse. Managing to pop the Rainmaker 2, just gonna grab, get the three points. What a play as they get the lead to 22, Rissa. Insane plays happening from Kiwi and just stalling out the Rainmaker that much more for 100% Sunshine. So that is just making Sonder have to, uh, you know, have to, have to regroup even more and get map control. Um, they are going to start getting a few more points on the board here as it looks like they're going to take the Rainmaker through this right side. Um, now they just need, you know, maybe some specials uh, to get some picks going. They are pushing the Rainmaker though and getting more points on the board than they have to give up. Leafy though with the Ink Jet's going to try to come in here for 100% Sunshine, but it's going to get taken down in the process by Shy. Henlo's going to go down as well. It's two down, make it 2v1 right now on top of this map, and Caden's just going to start running on forward. Kiwi, the last one up, going to get taken down by Shy, but no! They take it to the 25 point mark by going to the right. Sonder now in a three down situation. The last one jumps in, and 100% Sunshine is going to be able to defend the push at the last possible moment in order to take care of business here and they're going to start taking up the half pipe trying to put this rainmaker in a stalling position and they're taking a victory lap right now what an offense very surprising to see them hold that but this is extremely bad news for uh saunders they have no real way to move the rainmaker outside of those pen missiles and shy is quite far from them right now they're gonna have to use their specials just to get the rainmaker off of the stalling spot 
Which means they're gonna have less resources when the push actually happens. Shy electing to not take the 1v1 with Kiwi here, trying to get those missiles off, getting map control. And Sonder has one chance to make this push happen. Hayden grabbing the Rainmaker, Shy and Hemlo moving up, and here is Overtime. Overtime has found itself here. Ten of missiles coming out of 100% sunshine as they're going to start to move on forward here. But right now, there is not a path forward for Caden on this Rainmaker. You see the suction bombs here as well from that bomb launcher coming in. But now it's a general situation for 100% sunshine. And they're starting to push on this a little bit more forward. Shadow Wind is on off the end. It's Kiwi against the world and is not going to be able to find the pick. It's going to be the lead going to Sonder. And they're going to be the ones to advance themselves to match point. Wow, what a lead at the end. This, honestly, this was one of the best, if not the most entertaining Rainmaker sets I think I've ever seen. The lead flip so much, so many close pushes. That was constantly back and forth, and huge props to Sonder for keeping their cool and managing to clutch it at the last second. And that is putting them one game away from victory as the map goes to Splat Zones on Skipper Pavilion for Game 8. Ooh, this is gonna be really interesting. This, there's so many different ways to play this. You know, you know, splitting up who goes from the top or who goes to bottom, um, and getting to see these two teams play this is gonna be really cool to see. Kaden, yeah, I'm... Go ahead. or I just want to go back to that one. Uh, Kaden redeeming perhaps himself a little bit there, uh, able to find the Rainmaker clutch at in overtime as opposed to at that about 50 point mark. Uh, I'd imagine Sonder would be feeling a lot more comfortable uh, with that game and a lot more comfortable overall had they been able to find those extra four points in order to take that lead earlier in the match. Uh, but nonetheless, of course, they were able to find it in the end. Now, of course, turning our attention here a little bit more to Skipper Pavilion. Shara, how do you expect these teams to play this map? I'm going to say one thing. Sorrel attempt! Please play it, Shadow! This is the map mode for it. This is a map mode where Sorrel Tent is absolutely disgusting. Uh, I should have really expected... To see that. I should have expected Brella Pop propaganda. I really should have. You know, I was <laughs> expecting it. I really should have expected it. But here we are, folks. It is game eight. Sonder 100% Sunshine. Again, the winner here goes on to face Arctic Moon in the Division 1 finals. And Shy is coming out with the E leader here. Says, enough of your range. I'm going to take the longest range weapon in the game. Yeah, but unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be working out super well as Sonder going two down with Leafy getting a nice opening pick. Caden jumps out, gets pressure by the Bamboo, but manages to keep his life. But he does have that armor to allow a faster push in, but 100% Sunshine getting quite a bit of map control and specials early on. Being able to set up super well and approaching the Nautilus on this bottom looks to be a difficult task for Caden. It seems like Saunders is electing to go top. They have missiles on all four players, though, as they run towards zone. The splashdown denying the bubbles, the Booyah Bomb coming behind, and Kiwi dropping in, somehow managing to stay alive. That bamboo cannot be ignored. Kaden oh, getting a flank, gets oh, the no. kill, oh, almost keeps his life before Leafy gets the pick and the map control will be maintained by 100% Sunshine. Yeah, 100% Sunshine doing a great job at just recognizing where everyone of Sonder is and which direction they're trying to push. So right now, neither team have a specials necessarily ready. It looks like Sonder finally has specials ready to get in a position to try and push. So Shy going to throw out this rain here. Uh, Kaden's armoring and the Booyah Bomb came out from Synapse. So hopefully along with Henlo's splashdown they can cap it but Henlo gets called out right in the middle of the splashdown. Though Sonder finally to it able at least cap the zone. So that's just something they needed to give the penalty points over to 200% Sunshine K-Bot. Sonder able to find the cap here somehow, and as you mentioned, able to find those penalty points, those all critical penalty points, but unfortunately there, that was a 3v4. I'm sorry, Shy, you weren't able to hit a shot there in that exact instance, and we'll have to see if he starts warming up on this E leader uh, to try to start hitting some of those, because that would have been useful, especially earlier to try to take care of Leafy. Again, that's going to be exactly what you're trying to look for here, right? Is trying to pick off these members from afar before they can start getting things moving on forward, before they pop their income and start rushing into the zone like they're doing right now. It's 100% Sunshine is going to try to start, start rush in. They are going to be able to find the cap here. Henlo is going to get taken down in Splashdown, but Sonder able to find the recap here as well. Now, Leafy in the Inkjet 2 down situation, making an effective 3 down situation as Cadence forced to jump on back, and 100% Sunshine once again has control of the zone. 
Yeah, we do see Henlo up top trying to get that map control up there. Looking for anyone hiding. Skipper Pavilion, really good to have a 3-1 defending situation with having a Slayer on the top. Because it's just very difficult to change your resources both ways. And Leafy right now doing an amazing job of holding this bottom area down. But slowly the armor is coming out and Henlo looking for something to open this up, Rissa. Yeah, um, Henlo has that splashdown ready. Um, and along with Henlo's splashdown, uh, Sondra able to at least cap the zone. So looks like this is kind of a, a reoccurring situation for Sondra. They're able to get specials ready, go in and at least cap the zone to give 100% sunshine that penalty. But, you know, they have to get past that point of just capping the zone. They need to get to a position where they can just get the zone capped for their side and hold the zone as well. And they're starting. with a very smart jump out. Inkjet manages to get shy. I mean, I get Synapse and Henlo trading it out, but that play might have been the game winner if they can manage to paint the zone for a little bit longer. Caden desperately trying to maintain it, trying to keep his team in this, but the bubble blower from Ricky coming out will secure this, and we are going to a game nine. Oh no. It's game nine. And it's on Clamblitz the Reef, y'all. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's the map and mode for game nine. Clamblitz on the Reef. Um, anyway, yeah, I mean, well yeah. done to 100% Sunshine in that last one, of course. They were able to just maintain zone. They were able to come on through so effectively there. And really, there wasn't a lot that Sonder could do, you know, especially at the end there. You saw Synapse try to get zoned away by those bubbles uh, and the like. But anyway... Game nine, uh, last Clam Blitz match wasn't very hot for 100% Sunshine. This one might be a little bit more straightforward, but I mean, Rissa, what do you have to be thinking when you're going into this? You know, definitely compared to the last Clam Blitz map that we saw on Snapper, um, you know, honestly, my guess is that, uh, 100% Sunshine is going to have Leafy stick on the Nautilus because I think that has been a key factor. That weapon in particular has been a key factor for them for these matches. And so going into this, though, you know, I don't know if they're going to be able to... If it's just Clam Blitz they have an if issue with. Um, but I do think that Leafy being on the Nautilus is going to really help them out for this in particular. And of course, on the Reef, no matter what the mode is, whoever can have that bridge control is going to be really in control of the way the game goes. I mean, of course, we saw Leafy come in fresh off the gate and just was an absolute uh, menace and something that Saunders immediately had to adjust around and adapt around, realizing how much additional uh, kind of zoning power that that Nautilus does provide to a composition. Uh, and it's one of the reasons, especially in the hands of someone like Leafy, uh, why that weapon gets picked so much and why it gets played so much. Uh, Chara, of course, game nine situation. The pressure is on here. Ludi semifinals. What are these teams got going through their minds right now? If I am Sonder, I am doing everything I can to shake off that loss. Our comp wasn't that good there. They were, had a map where they could run Squeeze or Not and Bamboo in the same one. A lot of advantages to Sunshine. You need to throw that off. Focus on the fact that it's Clam Blitz, the mode you demolished that last time. And get your mental in the game, because it is game nine, and mistakes will be punished hard here. So if Sonder is looking to get the win here, they're going to have to come up incredibly clutch. And here we go. We do see Shy back on the Bamboo, the Not... Squeeze are coming out here. The comp that's been working best for both teams seems to be what we're seeing here as we head into this match, Rissa. Yes, uh, that's really good to note that these are the weapons that these teams have both been doing really well with. So immediately, uh, Sonder able to push in and get that instant rinse control. But as they got that, uh, looks like 100% uh, Sunshine was able to group up and rush that together as we're seeing these bubbles come out from Ricky um, and 100% Sunshine getting two down and just pushing up immediately, recognizing that they had the advantage in that situation. Um, but Synapse able to just kind of hold back and uh, punish that. And now Sonder able to regroup here and try and get in a position. But looks like Kiwi has a clam ready, you know, and there's a lot of map control on 100% Sunshine side. To up. Very neutral to start things off, especially in this first minute here. A couple of splats back and forth, but largely 
these teams both finding uh, an adequate amount of clams and kind of reconvening on their own signs. As I say that, though, Henlo is going to be able to find a couple here. And now it's a three-down situation, so Saunders should have the ability to pick up quite a bit of clams here. And you start to see that moving on forward, but Kane's going to get taken out right before making a power clam. That's going to be unfortunate here for Saunders, and that's going to mean that they're probably not going to have an opportunity now to try to push this one in. And all of a sudden, we're still in a deadlock here for a minute and a half so far into this game, and neither one of these teams has been able to build up a sizable advantage to convert into objective points. Yeah, right now we're seeing just an absolute battle for mid control, which Sonder, while winning, is not able to get enough clams, and that's a big difference between this mode and zones. Zones, you simply have to maintain mid. Clams, you have to maintain mid and then move with it. Part of why I like this mode so much. And the bubbles coming out from Ricky, not able to find anyone. Additionally, Leafy going down, gonna put 100% sunshine on the back foot once again. Ricky getting pressured slowly, barely managing to keep his life. I have no idea how he's not dead right now, honestly. <laughs> but they managed to get the missiles off here and are starting to push back in the mid to get him out of control. There's just so much of that happening back and forth. One team or the other is just getting mid control, then the other one gets one pick, and then they move forward into mid. So um, right now, Synapse is down on Saunders' side as 100% Sunshine is the one, the team in control of Bridge right now. And they, both teams have even clams them out. Saunders has 12, 100% Sunshine has 11. So it's just going to be really a matter of who can get the picks uh, to get a really big push in, um, you know, just... The old team's kind of poking at each other back and forth right now, Kibot. Here we go. Specials are coming out here, but there still isn't a power claim online for 100% Sunshine. They're still not able to find the map controls. They're trying to shove all their specials right down this straight area in front of the barrier, and they're not able to do right that. As Saunders going to be able to come in and clean things up. Leafy now with the inkjet's going to be able to find one. Synapse in front of the wall there, unfortunately. It's a 2 done situation for Saunders here, and now perhaps 100% Sunshine has another opportunity to try to sustain. But again, there isn't a power claim on the map. One of their members has nine, and there's just a couple in the area here that they can see but there's no map coverage, there's no specials, there's no way to move on forward. And that's one of the things that Saunders has been doing very well, maintaining map control in this area, maintaining control in this area in general. And now Leafy could be even caught out again by this fizzy bomb. It's going to get taken down as well. And 100% Sunshine had an opportunity, couldn't quite convert. Maybe it's Saunders' chance here, maybe it isn't. Now both these teams starting to charge up a couple more power claims, and we are still so tense in this match. It could be first score wins, Chara. Yeah, it's been almost four minutes without a single team able to start a push here. As map control has been maintained by 100% Sunshine a little bit longer. Shy, however, somehow going down there, I'm not quite sure how, but gets picked off. And the first score will finally go to the side of 100% Sunshine. And I was going to say a bad score, but Leafy managing to make that an actual push. And now it is Saunders' chance to respond Still, definitely not a secure lead by any means, but they have struggled to get a push off this game. They're going to have to come up with something to get in there. They have the missiles. They're going to have to go with this. This is their big opportunity. They have so many power climbs right now, but it's has to, to find a way through. Kaden has to charge up another armor as soon as possible. Already used it earlier to try to get a little bit of mid control, but now doesn't have one at the ready, and it's another tenant situation. Leafy's going to start to move on forward here. These other two members are just echo located with these power clams. Booyah Bomb is trying to come out here. Here's another ink armor from Kaden, but it's just a little bit too late. Now all the members of Sonder are up, and Leafy is down. We'll have to see if they can convert here. Just 15 seconds left to go for Sonder in order to find this one, or else they will be sent home from Looty Division 1. Kaden has a power claim here as well as Synapse. They can't quite seem to move on forward here with enough map coverage. A couple bombs coming in. Overtime's going to be forced momentarily. Kaden's going to try to step on forward, but here comes an ink armor coming out of 100% Sunshine. Hello, starting getting in position. Synapse is going to get taken down here. Kaden's going to try to step on forward, but there's just not enough yellow ink in front of the basket. But it's a 3 on situation for 100% Sunshine. There's going to be a splash in front of the barrier. The Kaden gets some one in. There's the extra one in there. There it is. Sonder is going to be the ones to take it. They're going to go on to face Arctic Moon in the Division 1 Finals. Holy crap. What a game. And I thought for sure Sonder had lost it with one of their members going down first, but managing to salvage it is Synapse, and the hero play will secure them their spot in the finals. Oh my goodness. I I was on the edge of my seat that whole last minute there. I mean, as soon as I saw three down on 100% Sunshine in overtime, I was like, that's it, that's game. And Sonder had so many clams ready, they were just able to easily just score those in and secure that. That was amazing. 
Oh! Okay. Um. Well then. You know, I criticized the teams for getting knockouts on one another earlier. Um, and I'm, I guess I'm glad I did. Like, can I take credit for the fact that the rest of the matches were closer? I feel like I can. Right? Is that, is that a thing I can do? Can I do that? Yeah, I... <laughs> I, am I allowed to take credit? Like, come on, we talk about cash occurs all the time. I should be able to take credit for that, right? Yeah, I, I mean, it was quite a close set. Definitely think that mistakes I mentioned at the start of the game were definitely out there. But 100% Sunshine still played pretty well and just not quite able to get there. The sub definitely worked out. I think having Leafy in was definitely a huge advantage for them as Leafy managed to get a lot of picks. But Sonder just... Slowly but surely adapting, definitely slipping up on quite a few occasions, but as a whole, managing to be the better team today. And this has got to be one of my favorite sets I've ever seen. It was a game nine, incredibly close games. The start made it look like it was going to be not as good a set. But DCs were weird. This this set had everything. I absolutely cannot wait to upload this one. <laughs> but yeah, I know huge, this... huge congrats to Sonder. I, I will say, though, if they want to beat Arctic Moon... From what I have seen today, and what I've seen from Arctic Moon, I do think they have some more things they need to work on. So I'm really curious to see if they're going to be able to make a few more adaptions and being able to take this win, because Arctic Moon is looking very strong. They look like a team who knows what their comp is. They know how to play it. They have figured out how their team likes to play, what they want to run, and how to play it. They look like they have figured things out way more than Sonder has. So absolutely needs to see something happen from Sonder. I'm looking to see adaptions. If they're set on this grand final set, I want to see them really become more confident in their game plan and really figure out what they want to do. But that's my take, and I'm incredibly curious to see how this grand final set will go. Yeah, I mean, hopefully it'll be a good one. Of course, I think Arctic Moon, we should actually go back and do the math on how many games Arctic Moon has lost so far in Ludi, because I don't think it's that much. They lost uh, one game in both of their playoffs matches. Um, and let's see, where were they? Arctic Moon lost three games to no title. Okay, they were a little bit closer to the group stage, but recently they've been going on a little bit more of a tear in their division and have certainly stepped up their game. We're gonna have to see exactly how that matchup versus Sonder goes next week. Rissa, any closing thoughts on the night? Uh, honestly, not, nothing. Uh, Chara said it all very well. You know, this, this set had everything. We went to a game nine where there were DCs, there was there was one team, you know, dominating the game, one game, but then there was also, right towards we got the end, both teams were back and forth, so this was just an amazing set to be able to watch. Was a lot of fun to watch, and of course, appreciate you two joining me uh, for the cast. Was mm -hmm. a fun night, uh, and yeah, should be a good one, of course. Chara, I believe you said that you're going to be uploading, uh, like, an alternate perspective to YouTube of this as well, maybe like highlights or something? Yeah, I will get, I'm going to put the full set on YouTube, except probably the first two games. I think I'll just put like a little highlights here, like dang, they got <laughs> dang, lol, DC, dang, lol, DC as well, lol, 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 and then just have the best of seven set be on there. But yeah, I'll definitely get this up here. This is just an incredible set for content, honestly, and I think it's just one of the best sets I've ever seen. So I'm, I'm really happy with this. It was just amazing stuff to see, honestly. So yeah, I'm, I had a ton of fun. Thank you so much for having me on here. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, of course. Rissa, thank you for coming on, too. As always, a pleasure to mm -hmm. cast with you. I know we got the opportunity to do this a handful of times, and it is always fun to do so. Mm -hmm. Yes, very fun. Thank you for having me.